Hello? Hello, everyone. Today, we will continue to look at a question bank for the Red Hat System Administrator certification. Next, let's look at question 17 and then move on. The following questions will also be operated on node 2. Here, first of all, we have already passed the previous question regarding the password reset. We have successfully entered the system. And next, we can configure the YUM repository. After configuring this repository, the content below will actually use something. There is a question that will use this. An installation of yum will use the yum command. Therefore, we need to configure it in advance, as it is also related to the questions below. Of course, if you want to test it, you can just install any software, or you can even directly install the software for the next question. That's also fine. So here, first of all, configuring this storage repository is actually the same as with node 1, which is our server A. The main difference is what? Yes, and what? Is that during our second configuration, we actually have an additional method. What is this additional method? It's because our server A has already been fully configured with this storage repository, and according to the requirements of the question, actually, both of us. The configuration of the virtual machines is exactly the same. Ah, because in our environment, there is actually only one repository, so these two virtual machines both designate the same repository as their storage repository as their software storage repository. So here, there are two methods. One way is to follow the same steps. As in our um, first question, specifically the second question in server A, just configure it the same way. It's exactly the same configuration. The second method is, you can also, what can you do? You can directly copy the files. Ah, you can copy the files. But of course, the prerequisite is that both of your. Ah, that is, between server A and server B, they need to be able to communicate normally. There's actually no big issue here because we configured the IP in the first question, right? Our server B also has an IP. We can check if these two IPs are on the same subnet. If they are, configuring this is actually very simple. So here we can take a look. First, let's take a look at this. Now we are on server. B, you see our IP is 250.200. Let's review the first question. In the first question, the IP we used was 250.100. It's the same subnet. One is 100, the other is 200. So what can we do with this question? First, you should test whether they can connect. We open this here. For example, we can ping something, um, ping this root at node 1. Ah, or actually adding the IP here would be better. For node 1, since the host name here is not actually the full host name, we should use the IP here, use the IP. Using the IP, oh right, we are pinging, not SSH. If we can ping successfully, then SSH shouldn't be a big problem. Let's take a look at the effect here. SSH root add the IP after at. Let's see the effect. Ah, if there's an error here, what does that mean? It means that port 22 on node 1 is not open, because if we can ping but can't connect, the firewall won't block port 22 by default. However, if this side... There are two situations where it's not allowed. In this situation, our SH service does not allow remote access by others, or it does not allow remote access by other users. Or what else? Or it could be that our firewall has blocked port 22. That's also possible. In my case, it doesn't matter. If it's blocked, we can just use another method. If it's not blocked during the exam, it might not be the case. But if it's not blocked, you can use the SCP command to directly copy files. For example, as we mentioned earlier, yes, you can directly use the user along with the IP. The IP address is 25.25.0.100. Ah, this is our IP, right? This is our previous IP. So here you can directly copy, directly copy a file directory, which is located in. The directory is in R. The directory is under ETC. 
yam.2epos.d, the name of our file at that time was. Ah, it's this name. And then we copy it to what? Copy it to the our local ETCI. Inside yam dot 2 epsd that's fine. This is if, ah, over here. The service is running, you can directly copy it like this. If it's not running and you want to start it, there's no need to waste time. If you don't start this service, it wastes a bit of time. So why not just directly edit our file? You can directly edit the file. Of course, there's another method here, which is, that is, after we access it remotely, because we can actually do it like this. Although our node 2 and node 1 cannot directly connect remotely, our host can actually communicate with both node 1 and 2, right? So here, there's a method where, for example, where we create another terminal. After creating the terminal, we connect to this virtual machine, right? This time, who do we connect to remotely? Connect remotely to our... Um, no, our IP is 1172 point what was it again 25.25.0.100 okay Is it connection ah we connect to it oh right haven't we configured the IP for the first question so we can't connect previously it wasn't the IP um, let me see let's try using this Try the host name. Ah, uh, using the main sound is possible. So, in this case, this method is actually feasible. This approach is indeed feasible. So what do we use? Use this command. Ah, uh, just now. What was the reason? It was due to an issue with our previous environment, right? Because we had taken a snapshot before, correct? Then, many configurations on server A were not redone. So here, after completing the normal setup, this command is actually fine. This command can normally copy files. It's just that we encountered a problem just now, which is we didn't configure this IP, so it couldn't connect here. If you want to connect, for example, what can we switch to? We don't have to use the IP, right? We can use, we can use the host name, right? The host name hasn't been changed yet. OK, let's copy it. Of course, we haven't done the first question here. We also haven't done the second question, but that doesn't affect us. Let's just go ahead and edit it directly. So here, first we use VM ETC. Yum. Click R. Click D. And then just add our file at the end. Once inside, according to the requirements of the question, the first and second questions are actually the same, and the way to write them is also the same. So just follow the method of the um, first question and write it again. That's all. Ah, it's like you've practiced twice here. Practice this problem twice. Ah, what I mentioned earlier is actually another way, which is that after you connect through our server A, you directly view this file, then copy its content, and paste it here. This is also feasible. It's another method. Ah, and copying and ICP actually have the same final effect. Ah, so here we'll write it manually, because after restoring the previous snapshot, our first one is gone, so we'll just write the second one here. First, let's take a look. Bye. Currently, there are two repositories. Note, two repositories. And their configurations are actually the same, so we only need to write it once. After writing it once, you can copy it and make some changes. Well, first of all, here is our domain name. It can actually be called the host name, because we are actually in an environment that cannot connect to the external network at all. So the path here is. The path is this. After that, add the version of our system. And then add our final name. Ah, uh, OK, this is our first scenario, the first scenario. Here, the main thing to note is that these letters and words should not contain symbols and should not be written incorrectly. Uh, however, the effect of writing incorrectly here is particularly obvious. If you make a mistake here, saving and exiting at this step definitely won't give an error. But then, after saving and exiting, if you try to install software or test it, it will give an error, and it might prompt you. 
A certain link might not connect. You, If you have written the link incorrectly, it might prompt you that the link cannot be connected. You, So you should check it. Check whether the letters and symbols in your link are correct. Pay attention to this. And here, first of all, after writing this link, what's next? Basically, all repositories can be written in a unified way like this. First, enable the repository. Second, disable it. Key detection. Of course, if you have a key, you can write it. Here, you should also pay attention. If the question what not requires you to write, it. If there is a key in the question, then it means. If you have it, then it equals the name of the key. And then, here, just set check to equal one, and you need to pay attention to this. If it's not specified in the exam, you can simply write JBG check equals zero. If it is specified actually, in the Red Hat version 8 exam, it includes this. It's called a key, and it does exist. Not only does it have a key, but it also has a description. Here, we actually didn't write the description. We only wrote the name link and then enabled or disabled it. In version 8, there are two additional lines, including a description, which is just the name. Below that, you write a description, which actually has no significance. Both the name and description are meaningless. They don't have practical significance for the repository. They are just there to give it a name and tell you roughly what it's used for. Isn't that just a repository? Wow, right. You can tell what it's for just by looking at the link. So, the description here is actually useless. Both the name and description are useless. However, if the question requires it, right? If we specify this repository, it's still better to write it down. Enabling this is the same for all. And then, here, the check is available in version 8 million. And basically, there are no more cases without this key. But if there is, everyone, don't write zero. If the problem requires you to write down this key, then k equals the key, and then it equals 1, that's fine. Please pay attention to this. Of course, here 0 and 1, yes and no, are both acceptable. 0 and no are the same. Yes and 1 are the same, so you can use no or 0 here. OK, after writing the first one here, we can directly copy and paste. Ah, copied less. 1231, a total of five lines, OK? Five lines. Then we just paste five lines, right? Just paste it down. After pasting it down, we use it here. First, change the name, including the ones in this box in the name, then just modify the link. The two below don't need to be changed. As for the name here, this name isn't important if the question doesn't specify it. If the question doesn't require it, the name isn't important. This applies to this name as well. The main requirement in the question is about which link or host you can download the software from and install it on the service. So, which one can you use? Uh, we won't elaborate much here. We've actually already done this in the first question before. After configuring here, just verify it and you're done. Finally, the DVD here also needs to be changed. Change it to our actual path. After making the changes, save it and directly test it. How do you test it? Just install the software directly. For example, just find any software. OK, if the installation is successful, there's no problem. This is our 17th question. The configuration is the same as the second question, so you can directly copy the file from the second question. You can use ICP to copy it directly without changing anything because the two are completely identical. Absolutely no difference at all. This is our configuration for the 10th question regarding the default storage repository. Once this configuration is done, the next question requires software installation, so make sure there are no issues here. Otherwise, it will affect the following questions. All right, this is our... This is the content for configuring the repository mode in question 17. If you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most stable question bank at the best price. That's all for today, everyone. Goodbye.